Hello again, we have learned what are shift instructions in the previous video. In this video, I'm going to explain what are sequencer instructions, and then I'll do a simple project with my PLC. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright. To illustrate the purpose and function of the sequencer instructions, we will examine the operation of the four-step sequencer with this intersection. We're going to write a program to control traffic in two directions. West to east and north to south. Each way has its traffic light. Here are six lights. So, we need six digital outputs to turn on off each light. Here, I have used the six first bits of 0.0. For example, I have connected the green light of west to east way to the six digital outputs. Similarly, to turn on the red light of the north to south traffic lights, I have to activate this bit of my output address. For these traffic lights, there are four states, which must be repeated in the sequence, step 1 to step 4. Note that, after the last step, this sequence, step 1 to step 4, must be repeated. Well, each step condition can be stored on a word memory of PLC. I have used four binary files to store these steps. Words B3 colon 1 to B3 colon 4. Now, I can use SQO instruction to move the first word, start condition, to the output. So, based on the start word, all outputs will be zero. Then transfer step 1 to step 4 to the output address, and repeat the sequence. For example at step 4, these bit of the output, will be activated. Pay attention. When a sequencer operates on an entire output word, there may be outputs associated with the word, that do not need to be controlled by the sequencer. In our example, bit 6 through 15 of output 0.0 are not used by the sequencer, but could be used elsewhere in the program. To prevent the sequencer, to transfer these bits to the output word, a mask word can be used. Based on the mask word value, only bits 0 through 5 can be moved from the PLC memory to the output. Other bits won't be controlled by the sequencer. Because these bits of the mask word are 0. So, these bits of the PLC outputs will be free, and can be used for other purposes. Alright, let's write the PLC program. These are sequencer instructions. Insert and sequencer output instruction, SQO. Its phi parameter is the starting address of the PLC memory, which contains the data that will be transferred to the destination address. This address must be started with a sharp sign. Note that, I have used B3 colon 0 address for the traffic light example. As you know, the mask value determines the bit pattern, which the sequencer instruction moves source data to the destination address. Recall that in the mask bit pattern, a 1 passes values, while a 0 blocks data flow. For the explained example, the sequencer instruction needs to control the first 6 outputs. This is its binary value.
that's equivalent to number 63, and also 3f in hexadecimal representation. So, I can use either this number for the mask value. Pay attention, an h is placed behind the parameter to indicate that the mask is a hexadecimal number, or a b to indicate binary notation. Decimal numbers are entered without any indicator. Destination parameter is the address of the output word or file, which the SQO moves the data from determined addresses. My destination is an output address, to turn on off traffic lights. Like shipped instructions, a sequencer needs an address of control data files. The SQO needs these data. Enable BR, N, bit number 15, which indicates the SQO instruction is enabled or not. The done bit, DN, bit number 13, is set after the last word in the sequencer file is transferred. For our traffic lights, the last word address was B3 colon 4. The position number indicates the step, that its data has been moved to the destination address. The length number is the number of steps of the sequencer file. The actual file length, will be the file length entered in the instruction plus 1. Recall we had 4 steps plus on startup word. The error bit, ER, bit number 11, is set when the processor detects a negative position value, or a negative or zero length value. Here, I must enter the data length, pay attention, the start address is B3 colon 0. So this address will be used to store initial values. The length parameter is 4, so the four next words will be used in the sequencer, which will be B3 colon 1 to B3 colon 4. Here, I can determine the startup words address. In this program, it can be a number from 0 up to 4. Alright, let me insert a normally open contact, and test the SQO instruction. Let's compile the program. There is an error. Unconfigured I.O. address used. That's true. Because my outputs are placed on my CPU which is installed on the slot number 0, not 1. If you remember, in the first videos, I configured my hardware here. My digital outputs are placed on the CPU which has installed on the slot number 0. Next modules, which are installed on the next slots are analog inputs, not outputs. Now, let's modify the sequencer data files, based on the traffic light steps. Its address starts from B3 colon 0. Let's save this program, and open it with Arslogix Emulate 500. Well, the Arslink software has detected the virtual PLC. I have explained how to use Arslinks and Arslogix Emulate 500 before. Now, let's download the program to test it. Well, I must go to the run mode. Let me open the input and output data table.
let's enable the sequencer instruction. As you can see, by each activation, a specified data will be transferred to the output. Well, the traffic lights are at the step 3, by the next activation, they will be at the step 4. The sequencer reaches to the last step, so, the done bit was activated, and by the next activation, the sequencer will go to the first step. Alright, there are two other types of sequencer instructions. SQC, or Sequencer Compare. This instruction compares its entered data with the source value, at each step. If the specified data be equal to the source value, the found bit will be 1. Another instruction is SQL, the Sequencer Load. This instruction loads data from the source address, to the sequencer file. So, the SQL and SQO instructions work inversely. If you have learned the SQO instructions, you will able to test and understand SQC and SQL instruction easily. Now let me define and do a simple project with my PLC. I want to write a program that Turn on PLC outputs LEDs from the last LED to the first one. And the program repeats the specified sequence automatically. Pay attention, these are my outputs LEDs. So, I want to turn on the last LED, then the tenth LED, until the first LED, and then repeat the sequence from the last LED automatically. Alright. This is a simple program which I have written before. I have used this SQO instruction which can be activated by the done bit of the on timer. The start address of the sequencer file data is B3 colon 0. This output address is the sequencer destination. So, at the step 1, this word will be copied to the output. Based on this word, only the bit number 11 will be on. By the next activation, this word will be transferred to the output. So, the tenth output will be on. This sequence will be continued to turn on the first PLC output and then will be repeated again. Instead of using a simple contact, I have used a digital input to activate this part of my program, which has two timers. Each timer activates another one, the preset time of both timers are 1, you can change them and test the program. Finally, the done bit of the second timer has been used to activate the sequencer instruction. Now, let's download and test the program on my PLC. Well, I must change the CPU mode to run mode. Let me activate the first digital input. As you can see, each timer will be activated for one second. And the sequencer turns on each PLC LEDs for two seconds. Let me magnify the screen to have a better view. Alright, I hope you have learned shift and sequencer instructions. In the next video, we'll learn how we can use analog inputs or outputs in a PLC program. Thanks for watching my content, 
If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.